Okay, so we're going to go over the life cycle of moss. And actually, before we get into the specifics of moss, I want to take a moment and review the general life cycle that plants go through. And so let's take a moment to review that first. So here's a diagram that we saw the other day in class. And it's the pattern of plant reproduction, plant life cycles, called alternation of generations. And what we mean by this is plants will alternate between a haploid and a diploid stage in their life. Well, let's start with a stage I hope we all recognize, the zygote. So a zygote, if you recall, is created when a sperm cell and an egg cell fuse together. So a zygote, because it's half sperm and half egg, half and half adds up to a whole. So a zygote is a diploid cell, a complete set of chromosomes that belong to that particular species. So a zygote is the first original diploid cell. So a zygote marks the beginning of the diploid stage in the life, and that's why it's the be at the beginning of this peach-colored area. The peach color is the diploid stage. We'll follow the cycle in the picture. The zygote will divide by the process known as mitosis. It might take years and years and years, and in some plants it might even take decades. But eventually, the zygote will divide eventually enough times over years and years to create an adult sporophyte. And not every plant, by the way, takes years and decades. I mean, some plants only live for one year. So in some plants, this process happens uh, at a fairly rapid pace. But other plants that live a long time, like redwood trees and sequoia trees, this might take years for them to reach their adult sporophyte stage. So after a plant has reached its adult sporophyte stage, follow the arrows, a portion of the sporophyte will perform meiosis. And any time meiosis is performed, I hope you know you are starting with a diploid cell and ending haploid. So notice how the picture changed from peach, which is the diploid color, to blue, which is the haploid color, because meiosis is performed. So meiosis creates haploid spores. Follow. Well, those spores are then released into the air and carried by wind, maybe carried by rain, and eventually those spores are going to land. And if you see, follow the picture, the spores will grow into what is called a gametophyte. So when the spores land, the spores are haploid and they grow into the haploid organism called the gametophyte. And some gametophytes are male, some gametophytes are female. And in the word gametophyte, I hope you can see the prefix for gamete. So the gametophytes are going to make gametes. If I were to ask you, what will the male gametophyte create? I hope you know the male gametophyte creates the male gamete called sperm. If I were to ask you, what will the female gametophyte create? I hope you know that the female gametophyte is the egg. So the female gametophyte creates the female gamete. I think I may have said that wrong. The female gametophyte creates the female gamete. The female gamete is the egg. That sounds better in my head. Hopefully I said it right the first time. And so once the egg and sperm have been created, all it takes is the sperm to swim to the egg for fertilization to take place. So the sperm will swim to the egg. So plants actually have swimming sperm. Not all plants, but the plants we're going to focus on today, moss, they definitely have swimming sperm. They have a little flagella that propels them through the watery environment where they live. So some, some plants will have swimming sperm that will swim to the egg, fertilize the egg, and create a zygote. And again, that will restart, that will restart the diploid stage in the life of a plant. So when the zygote has been recreated, our cycle repeats. And so now we're just repeating ourselves in, in this alternation of generations. This is the general pattern of plants. Now we're going to focus our attention specifically on moss today. So why don't we go ahead and look at the category of plants that moss are in. Eventually we're going to learn about three groups of plants. We're going to start only by looking at group one today. These group, group one, are the scientific word for, for seedless and non-vascular plants are called bryophytes. 
I've highlighted bryophytes in the cladogram in the animation. So uh, a bryophyte is a seedless plant that is also not vascular. These are the most primitive of plants. If you look at the cladogram, look at the bottom, the green algae ancestor. Follow the line up. The first branch leads to a plant called hornworts. The second branch to a plant called liverworts. The third branch to a plant called mosses. These are, are called bryophytes. These are seedless plants and not vascular. And so what we know about them is some basic traits such as they live in moist environments. Even though they live on land, the land where they live is fairly moist. And it makes sense because in order to reproduce, their sperm needs to swim through water. So they have to live near moisture. And here's an example of a liverwort. If you've never seen pictures of liverworts before, here they are. Uh, they're fairly small to the ground because they're again they're non-vascular. Here's some picture a picture of some hornworts. Again, they're very small to the ground, no more than an inch or, or inch or two or so tall. Very small to the ground, non-vascular. And um, here's a picture of something we've all seen. I'm sure we've all seen moss growing on a rock or in between cracks on the sidewalk. Again, moss is a very small, it's a seedless plant, and because it's small, it's non-vascular. So again, just the picture showing the three different types of seedless, non-vascular plants. Again, the scientific classification is called bryophytes. So these are examples of bryophytes. So let's focus our attention on mosses. We're not going to say too much about hornworts or liverworts. Let's just focus on mosses. We're all familiar with mosses. We've all seen them growing. Here's a common picture of what moss looks like. It looks like just green carpeting on the, on the ground of the forest. And keep in mind, we've mentioned this a few times already, because they're non-vascular, they're going to grow low to the ground. Now, they still need water. They still need nutrients. So they have to have a way to get water. They have to have a way to get nutrients transported around to every cell. And it's simply diffusion that does this. Other plants have a vascular system, like big trees, sequoia trees. They have a vascular system. Their vascular system carries water and nutrients all around the tree. Well, mosses don't have a vascular system, but they still need to carry uh, water and glucose and other nutrients to uh, all around their, their, their cells, and they use simply diffusion to do that. Here's a picture of the leaf of a moss, and I hesitate to use the word leaf because um, according to classification, we don't even consider these to be real leaves. So we, uh, we, you know, the, the notes say that they lack true leaves. So I'm not 100% sure as to what makes a leaf a true leaf. So if you can find that out, maybe post it in the comment box, that would be great. But I think the main reason why we don't consider them to be true leaves is because, they, again, they don't have a vascular system. True leaves have veins that branch off different directions. If you pluck a leaf off of a tree, look at the leaf. You'll see veins on it, and these don't. So I think that's the reason why we don't consider them true leaves. But you can see they're real thin, only one cell thick in size. So thin, you can see light passes through them. They have uh, an anchoring system called rhizoids. So here's a diagram of a, of a drawing of moss. And if we look beneath the dirt, if we look beneath the dirt, we can see that in the diagram, the, these root, this root-like system called rhizoids holds them and anchors them into the soil. And this is something we mentioned during the ecology unit earlier in the school year. We mentioned that moss and lichen are good examples of pioneer species because they are often the first to inhabit new ecosystems. And over time, the ecosystem uh, accumulates more biomass. The ecosystem goes through a series of changes known as secession. But if you recall, this is more for review purposes, lichen and moss, this presentation is about mosses, so mosses are one of the, uh, the pioneer species that we talked about earlier in the school year. So let's go into the life cycle of a moss. Here we have uh, just a real pretty picture of a forest floor covered with moss. And so whenever you see moss, what you're looking at is the gametophyte stage. 
Remember, plants alternate between gametophyte and sporophyte, back to gametophyte, back to sporophyte, back to gametophyte. And so what you're seeing whenever you see moss, you're almost always going to be seeing the gametophyte stage. It's the dominant stage. They spend the majority of their cycle in the gametophyte stage. Just a reminder, this is the haploid stage. But anytime you come across moss, you're probably looking at the gametophyte stage. Well, let's go through their cycle now. So before, actually, I forgot about this bullet of information right here. If you just kind of use your imagination, it kind of looks like a layer of green shag carpeting. And when I saw this picture, I immediately thought of my grandparents' ho uh, house when I was growing up. So this isn't an actual picture, but this is a picture of, uh, that reminded me of what my grandparents' um, carpeting used to look like. My grandparents were kind of stuck in the 1960s, 1970s, so they were a few decades behind in their... Uh, in their furnishings and how they styled their house and so I just remember they had real thick green shag carpeting and uh, I, I think a moss whenever I see stuff like this but let's actually go on to their life cycle life cycle now so here we have just a drawing of a male gametophyte again if you come across moss growing in between the cracks of the sidewalk or growing on a rock if you come across moss you're looking at its gametophyte stage now with the naked eye, you're not going to be able to tell is that the male gametophyte or is that the female gametophyte. You really can't tell. It's too small with the naked eye. But if we could zoom in and take a closer look, we would see that at the very tip of the male gametophyte, let's take a look, let's zoom in and take a look right now. Here we are. If we were to zoom in to the very tip of the gametophyte, with a high power microscope you can see in this picture we're at 400 times magnification at the very tip there are little housing structures called antheridia antheridia is plural antheridium is singular and inside of every antheridium are hundreds and hundreds of sperm cells now again you can't see this with the naked eye but they're there if you could zoom in with a high powered microscope well what about the female gametophyte Again, you might have two moss plants growing side by side. You can't, with the naked eye, you're not going to be able to tell the one on the left is male, the one on the right is female. You're not going to be able to tell with the naked eye. But if you were to zoom in to the tip of the female one, just like we did with the male one, let's zoom in right now. Here we are. If we zoom in to the tip of the female gametophyte with a high-powered microscope, we could see that there's a little housing structure called the archegonium. And inside of every archegonium creates an egg, an egg created, created that will eventually uh, fuse with the sperm cell to create a zygote. But we're not ready for that yet. So let's just focus on uh, the fact that gametophytes come in male versions, gametophytes come in female versions. And so the problem is we have sperm on the plant on the moss to the left wanting to get to the female on the right. Well, in order to do that, there has to be something for the sperm from the male to swim through. So here we go. The sperm cells, in order to fertilize the egg, have to be able to swim from the male gametophyte on the left to the female gametophyte on the right. But these things live on land, so how do they swim? Easy. Rainwater. Here we go. We're going to make it rain. It's raining. And now that there's a layer of water on the ground, in a moment you're going to see sperm cells swim from the gametophyte on the left to the gametophyte on the right. In this animation, I only made three sperm cells. In reality, we're talking hundreds, if not thousands. So here we go. Watch the three sperm cells swim from the left to the right. Here we go. And there they are. Notice how a couple of the sperm cells went off in the wrong direction, but one of them, one of them fertilized the egg that was inside of the archegonium. Once that happened, they created a zygote, a diploid zygote. If you recall, the diploid stage is called the sporophyte stage. So the zygote marks the beginning of the diploid stage known as the sporophyte. So the sporophyte stage begins when the zygote is created. And over time, that zygote will divide by mitosis. One cell becomes two, two become four, four become eight. And eventually, a stalk begins to grow. Here we go. 
a stalk begins to grow out of the zygote. And notice at the tip of the stalk, there's a little bulb, a round little structure at the tip. This is called a capsule. And inside of that capsule are spores being created by the process of meiosis. So if you notice though, the sporophyte stage is actually attached to the green female gametophyte stage. So the sporophyte stage actually gets its nutrition from the gametophyte stage. So you're not going to find the sporophyte stage growing separately on the ground. The sporophyte stage is literally growing on top, growing out of the female gametophyte stage. So those spores that are going to be created inside the capsule by meiosis, eventually those spores are going to be released into the wind. So those spores are eventually going to be released into the wind and they will land on the ground and grow into new gametophytes. So here we are. They're going to blow away in the wind right now. There they go. They're blown away and notice how two of those black dots representing spores, notice how two of those spores landed on the ground. If you're still copying the notes, you might want to hit the pause button because in a moment all the words are going to disappear. But here we go. Those two black dots are spores. They landed on the ground. And what's going to happen now that those spores landed on the ground? Those spores are going to grow into new gametophytes. One spore might grow into a male gametophyte. The other spore might grow into the female gametophyte. Again, with the naked eye, can you tell the difference between the two? Not really. But with the microscope, you can zoom in to the tip of the male gametophyte. And if you zoomed into the tip of the male gametophyte, you would see again the anthridia, which produces sperm. If you were to zoom into the tip of the female gametophyte, if you zoomed into the tip of the female gametophyte, you would see the archegonium with an egg inside. And so now that they've created the sperm and the egg, the sperm needs to swim to the egg, so therefore it's going to have to rain again. Here comes the rain. Now that water is on the ground, we're going to have sperm cells swimming from the male to the female gametophyte. This time, I only drew one sperm cell. I didn't draw more than one, but here it goes. The sperm cell is swimming and eventually fertilizes the egg to make a zygote. The zygote marks the beginning of the diploid stage in the life of a plant. In this case, the life of a moss. So eventually, the water will evaporate and from that zygote, just like on, uh, we saw earlier, from that zygote, a new sporophyte will grow with a stalk, with a capsule. And remember, what's being created inside of that capsule are spores. That's why it's called the sporophyte. The sporophyte creates spores. And eventually, the spores will be released into the air. The spores are released into the air, and the cycle repeats again. So all we're seeing here is how plants alternate between diploid and haploid, diploid and haploid. The sporophyte, remember, is the diploid stage. The gametophyte is the haploid stage. Here's a diagram from your textbook. Uh, look in the back of the book. I believe this is Appendix B in the back of your book. It's probably, the words might be a little too small to read in this video, but if you go to Appendix B in the back of your book, um, it'll be helpful for you. If you don't have your book, well, hopefully uh, the, the video notes that we just went through were helpful. If not, come and talk to me, and I'd be happy to clarify. So here's a good practice for you. Here's six steps of the moss life cycle jumbled up out of order. So if you want to try this, hit the pause button, spend some time, and try to put these six steps in order from start to finish. I gave you step number one. A spore lands on the ground. Well, now what? So try to figure out these, pause the video if you want more time. And here is again the quiz that I like to put at the end of many of our, our notes, uh, a Kobe quiz, just practice quiz questions. You can find all of these somewhere in the PowerPoint presentation. So again, if you want to work on these, pause the video, take some time and go back through the notes and try to find the answers to these questions. These make good practice before we eventually have a test or a quiz. If you need any help understanding moss and plant reproduction, come on into my classroom and I'd be happy to spend some time with you.